You asked for it in the comments, so today we're going to add Wi-Fi to a 3D printer. By the end of this video, we should have a web GUI that we can control the printer with, we can send it terminal commands, and we can upload G-code onto the onboard SD card on the printer. This is all made possible by an ESP8266 module that costs less than $5, and a few other cheap parts to get this thing up and going. Here's a close-up look at the ESP8266. There's the back of the board and all its connections. We'll also need a voltage regulator. This is an AMS1117. This will take anywhere from 5 to 12 volts and bring it down to 3.3 that we can use with our Wi-Fi module. This will also provide the higher amperage that the module requires. This tutorial will be focused on the standard ramps board. Some breadboards, some jumpers, and I'm going to use an Arduino Uno to configure the ESP8266. You could just go ahead and use the RAMS board to get it configured, but it's a lot easier for me to show you how on this blank UNO board. So here we go. This video is going to be a lot of screen share, and there's going to be a lot of up-close table views, because there's going to be soldering, we're going to have to dev it up, and do all kinds of things to get this thing to work. But at the end of this video, you should be able to add Wi-Fi to your standard RAMS board, and probably a lot of other boards. So let's get going. First, I want to get everything wired up for the ESP configuration. I want to give you a close-up view of what the module looks like on the back so you know what ports I'm using. Here's a pinout of the ESP8266. We're really only concerned about the receive, the VCC, the transmit, the ground, and the check CPU. This one has to receive 3.3 volts for it to work. Also, the GPIO0 pin has to be grounded out to allow you to modify the firmware. So the first thing I'm going to do is mount my voltage regulator. You can see the voltage in on the left, the ground on the right, voltage out in the center. We'll just mount it on the breadboard. Now your standard ramps board puts out 5 volts, but Arduino does put out 3.3 volts. You could cable the 3.3 volt line to this configuration, but most of the time it probably won't have enough amperage to power this ESP module. So we're going to step 5 volts down to 3.3 volts, and that should give us enough current. We'll cable one of the ground pins to the ground rail. Now I'm going to cable the 5 volt pin to the voltage in pin on the regulator. I'll cable the ground rail to the ground pin on the regulator and the voltage out on the regulator to the positive rail. Now the ESP module is not breadboard friendly, so you can either create some sort of adapter or use jumper wires. For the mock-up, I'm just going to use some jumpers. So we'll cable our EN pin or the check CPU pin to the 3.3 volt rail. The transmit pin will go to the transmit line on the Arduino. The receive pin will go to the receive port on the Arduino. Ground will go to ground. And the 3.3 volt pin will go to the 3.3 volt rail. But we can leave it unhooked for now because we will need to unhook it and rehook it during the config. The GPIO0 pin will also need to be hooked up to ground to allow us to modify the firmware. We'll go ahead and hook that up for now. Now with the ESP module power line unhooked, let's go ahead and power up our UNO, get it cabled to the PC, and we'll start the config. Your power regulator will probably have a red LED on it to show you that it's working. First thing we need to do is head out and get the Arduino IDE software. I'm going to be using the 1.8.5. Now the install is complete. Let's open up the IDE. The first thing I like to do before I start any Arduino project is upload a blank sketch. So just go with the blank sketch that opens by default. Tools, 
select your board. In this case, we're using an Uno. The COM port that the board's using, COM 11. Hit upload. This will clear out anything that's currently on the Arduino. Once the upload is done, I like to unplug and replug the Arduino just to make sure the power gets cycled and things are cleared out. Now we need to go grab the ESP8266 library and the file system tool that we need. For this project, I'm going to be using the ESP3D software that provides a serial to Wi-Fi bridge and a GUI to control your printer. All the information you need for this install is on this page, and I will provide all the links in the description below. We're going to copy the link to the ESP8266 library, head back to the IDE, go to File, Preferences, copy your URL in this box, and click OK. Now go to Tools, select your board, Board Manager, and then scroll all the way to the bottom, and you should see the ESP8266 library. Click on it. We're going to go with 2.4.0 and click Install. Once it's installed, click Close. Close the IDE and reopen it. You should now be able to see the ESP8266 module in your board list. Click on that module. The ESP module that I'm using is an ESP01. It has a 1 megabyte flash storage chip on it. The newer versions actually have 4 meg chips on them, but I would recommend sticking with at least 1 meg for this project. One of the cool things about ESP8266 modules is you can use that flash storage for firmware, but you can also use it for a file system. So now we need to go grab the file system tool so we can alter the files. Back to the ESP3D tutorial, there's a link to a GitHub page to alter the file system. Download the ESP8266FS0.3.0 zip file. Open that file up, copy this folder, and we'll want to go to C drive, program files x86, Arduino, tools, and we'll paste that folder here. Once again, close the IDE and reopen. Now if you go to tools, you should see the ESP8266 sketch data upload. This will take the data folder that's in your sketch and upload it to the file system on the ESP8266. Now we need to go grab the ESP3D software. Depending on what IDE version you're using and what ESP8266 library version you're using, you'll need that defined software. For this config, we'll need version 0.9.99. Click source code zip. Now we'll open our downloads folder. There's the ESP3D software. Right click, extract all. Now in that folder, open up the ESP3D folder. Open up the ESP3D folder again. And click on the ESP3D INO file. This will open up the Arduino sketch. Before we load the ESP3D software, if you don't know which ESP8266 module you have, there is an example sketch that will help you figure that out. Go to File, Examples, ESP8266, and open up Check Flash Config. Now cable up the 3.3 volt line to the ESP module. You'll see the LED flash once. Make sure that your GPIO0 line is hooked up to ground. This will allow us to configure the module. Go back into Tools. Make sure your board is the generic ESP8266 module. Make sure the correct COM port is selected. And then click Upload. Once that upload is completed, you can head over to the Serial Monitor. The Serial Monitor will give you the flash size, the flash ID, and if you're configured correctly. We currently have the 512K board selected, and we have a 1 meg board. So it's going to tell you your flash chip configuration is wrong. Go back to Tools, select Flash Size. We're going to select 1 meg 512K SPIFFS. What this is saying is you have a 1 meg flash chip, but 512K of it can be used for your file system. Upload again. When you have this board selected, it's actually bypassing the Arduino and putting the firmware directly on the ESP chip. Now that it's done uploading, open the serial monitor one more time. 
Anytime you make firmware changes on your ESP module, it's always a good idea to restart the module before you do anything else. Just unplug the three volt line and plug it back in. And now it's reading chip configuration okay. We're using the one meg module. That's pretty much the only configuration option you need to change. One meg 512K file system and 115200. Pretty much everything else can stay default. Now that we know the chip's okay, Let's go back to our ESP3D sketch, reset the module. Again, anytime you interact with the module, it's a good idea to unplug the power and plug it back in just to reset the module. Go to Tools, make sure it still says 512K, 115200, and hit Upload. When the sketch is done uploading, reset the module, then go to Tools, and we'll upload the sketch data to the file system. Now that the file system's uploaded, We'll unplug the module. We'll remove the ground line from the GPIO zero pin. Then we'll plug the module back in. With any luck, the module will now be an access point that we can access from our Wi-Fi adapter. So let's head over to the laptop. Now we should be able to go in to Wi-Fi networks, find the ESP3D network, click connect, and the password is 12345678. Click Next. And it's going to pop open a browser and redirect you to that module. Start setup. The printer I'm going to be hooking up to is running Marlin. Click Set. I'm going to be using the 115200 baud rate, but you have to make sure that it's the same in Marlin as it is here. Here's the baud rate setting you need to look out for in Marlin. This just has to match the same baud rate as your ESP module. So if you're using 250,000, select that here. We'll just keep it 115200 for now. Click set and click continue. I don't need my module to serve Wi-Fi. I want it to connect to the Wi-Fi. So we're gonna move it to client station, hit set. Here you can scan for the wireless network you wanna to connect to. We're gonna connect to BC Wireless. Click set, put in your Wi-Fi password, click set, and you can define the name that this ESP module will be called. Since we're going to hook this to my log printer, let's call it log Wi-Fi. Click set. And then click continue. Click close. Now we're at the ESP3D GUI. You can control your printer from here. You can upload files to the SD card from here. You can also control the ESP3D settings from here. Now that we're done with the initial config of the module, let's power it off and we'll power it back on. And with any luck, the module will join our wireless network. The only problem is we don't know what the IP is. So we need to get into our router and find that module. Every router is gonna be different, but from my DHCP list, it looks like the module is ESP 5D9259. The DNS hasn't updated yet to say log, but this is the module. It's only been connected for 36 seconds. So mine is 1.241. Enter that IP in your URL bar, and this will be the window to your Wi-Fi 3D printer. If you're having problems uploading or configuring your module, I recommend uploading a blank sketch. Here's how you do that. If you're having issues and your ESP module isn't acting like you think it should, the easiest thing to do is just to clear out the flash on that module and start from scratch. This is a one meg module, so you can do that by uploading a one meg blank sketch, but you'll have to have the firmware tool. So let's go grab the firmware tool, head to downloads, right click, we'll extract here, flash download tool, open the tool. Our ESP chip is on COM11, and now we'll need the blank one meg sketch. We'll download that from here, downloads, and we'll extract all. Now go back to your firmware tool. In the 0x0 register, the boot register, click that box, and find your blank sketch file. Click open. Now click start. This is completely filling up the flash memory full of zeros, basically. This will get rid of anything that was causing issues in the ESP module. Now the blank sketch upload is finished. 
Remember, you only have to do this if you're having trouble uploading firmware to the module. Now back to the rest of the project. At this point, the UNO can be taken out of the picture. We'll unplug it, unplug the receive and transmit, and the power in the ground. And now the ramps board will step in to power this. We're going to be using the AUGS1 terminals, this top row. Power, ground, transmit, receive. The TX pin on your module is going to go to the right pin on the top row of the AUGS1. The RX pin on your module will go to the pin that's next to that. Again, still on the top row. The next pin over will be your ground pin. And that will go to your ground rail. And the last pin, the one all the way on the left of AUGS1, is 5 volt power. That will be cabled to the power in pin on your voltage regulator. This is just a breadboard example of how you would hook this up to ramps to get it to work. Of course, you're not going to want this configuration hanging around while you're trying to print things. So we need to build a module. WWBHD. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some breadboard and make some plugs with these DuPont connectors, solder the pins on so I can still remove my ESP module, and then solder on my voltage regulator as well. So one side of the board will connect to ramps, the other side of the board will connect to the ESP module. I've straightened the legs out of my voltage regulator so it'll lay down on the board. That has been soldered and I clip the legs down. I'm going to solder eight legs to the top side of the board. So the pins are soldered. I'm just going to use this scavenged module on top. I'm sure there's a more elegant solution than this. Whatever you use, just make sure they're nice and snug when you plug in your module. Now I'll solder four pins on the back side that can plug into the ramps board. Four pins are soldered on. I'm going to add a ground wire and solder it for the ground pin on the ramps. I'm going to add the ground wire next to the ground pin on the ESP module. Ground from the module to the ramps board is hooked up. Now I'll add in the ground pin to the regulator. Now I've got the ground pin of the voltage regulator over to the pin of the module and the ramps board. Now let's work on power. There's the 5 volt ramps pin soldered into the regulator. Now we hook up to the transmit line to the transmit pin on the ESP. There's the transmit line. There's the output of the voltage regulator soldered to the 3.3 input on the ESP. There's the CPU check pin soldered to the 3.3 volt on a regulator. And finally the receive pin of the ESP module hooked up to the ramps pin. Now the ESP module should set in this pin header on top. I cut off the excess dev board. Then I'm going to use this adapter cable to hook up the back pins to my ramps board. It's kind of hard to see inside there, but it's going to be hooked up just like this. Now I'll close everything up. I just mounted my module on the back of my printer with a zip tie for now. Now let's head back over to the GUI and see if this thing works. If this is checked, it will automatically check your temperatures, and it looks like those are reading just fine. Let's see if we can make some small movements. That seems to be working just fine. Let's auto home. When you plug your Wi-Fi module in and you start up your GUI interface, you'll notice that the IP address of your Wi-Fi is on your LCD screen. Now let's upload some G code and see if we can get a print. Hit upload. One thing to note, this software doesn't like the full word G code as a file extension. So if you're getting an error, change your file extension to .gco and it should work just fine. Hit open. Now it's uploading the G code. The G code upload is complete. Let's hit print and see what happens. And it prints. It even comes with a live terminal window where you can enter commands on the fly. And there you have it, a Wi-Fi controlled ramp space 3D printer for around $5. Now this module isn't the easiest thing to get set up. You need to do a lot of soldering and my soldering skills aren't that great. I'm sure a lot of you could do a lot better. Also the serial connection when uploading files to the SD card is really slow. You could raise the baud rate and try to speed things up a little bit. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. 
If not, leave your thoughts below. And as always, thanks for watching.